Good day. In the last session we introduced the policies that are present in MOSMOD and distinguished the definitional policies and the tax and benefit policies. In this session we're going to look at the tax and benefit policies in more detail. We're going to understand how they're constructed and in particular look at functions and parameters which are the components of um, policies. And then we're going to conclude the session by looking at how to run the model and access the output. First of all, it's important to distinguish between systems, policies and functions. So systems contain groups of policies. Policies are constructed from functions and it's the functions that form the calculations to create the model output. Now what's a system? I'll just switch to the model here and point out what a system is. A system is actually a group of policies um, and it's represented by a column in the model. Um, the only system that's present in the version 1.0 of MOSMOD is the MZ underscore 2015 system which is the set of rules um, that are required to simulate these policies for the year 2015. Okay. Back to the presentation. We can show all of this diagrammatically because as I said in, in, in MOSMOD version 1.0 there is one system that's the 2015 system that you can see there. Um, and then there are policies, and these are some examples. There's an income tax policy, um, direct social support program, basic social support program, and indirect taxes, including value-added tax. And then we have functions, and just um, for example, the direct SSP contains eligibility tests and calculations to calculate amounts. Now functions are the building blocks of all policies in MOSMOD. Different combinations from the full set of functions allow the construction of almost any policy. And functions can be classified into three categories policy functions for implementing tax benefit policies, system functions for implementing the basic framework of the model. And there are also some special functions, but we don't use these in MOSMOD. In fact, in MOSMOD there are only 11 functions, three policy functions, Elledge, Benkalk, Arithop, and the remaining eight um, system functions of uprate, devvar, def input, def il, ilvar op, def tu, def const, and def output. Uh, and I'll be explaining all of these as, as we go through these sessions and I take people through the model itself. But basically, so we have eight system functions and we have three uh, uh, um, policy functions. Each function consists of a header displaying the name of the function and a switch defining whether the function is um, activated or not. And then the function is divided into a series of parameters. OK, what's a parameter? Um, many parameters appear um, within multiple functions and some, on the other hand, are specific to particular functions. Most of the policy functions and some of the system and special functions have common parameters, um, but some have um, parameters that relate only to a particular function. There are compulsory and optional parameters, but, for example, the parameter tax underscore unit must be included in all policy functions, otherwise MOSMOD will issue an error message. And MOSMOD is told how to calculate the policy by setting the parameters of the functions um, to appropriate values. 
Now I will be taking you through the model showing you um, this but I think in the first instance it's worth actually talking um, through and before we explore it on, on, on the model. And let's take first of all a policy function which is the function Elige. It's one of the three policy functions that we use in MozMod and I think it's uh, um, really quite straightforward. Elige determines eligibility. It sets a variable, the output variable or an, a system variable to one if an individual is eligible or zero if they're not based on one or more conditions. Must contain the parameters elig underscore cond which is the eligibility condition itself and as I said just previously must contain the parameter tax unit because all policy functions must contain the tax unit function. Conditions may be quite simple like for example age greater than or equal to 60 so DAG greater than or equal to 60 DAG being the variable for age or it can use built-in queries such as is this individual a dependent child or is this individual head of the tax unit. Each condition is enclosed by curly brackets and conditions may be combined with AND and OR. Um, the AND and OR are specified using the stator symbols for AND and OR, that is the ampersand and the uh, vertical bar. Um, components can include variables, income lists, numeric amounts and footnotes. We'll come on to footnotes in due course as examples, so I won't mention at the moment. And conditions can be assessed at different levels. Um, and again, don't want to confuse the issue at the moment by explaining levels, though they are used within MozMod. Um, and, and I will talk about them when we go through the model itself. So let's look at um, an eligibility condition. Um, I'm actually going to give you the example of the eligibility condition for simplified tax and I'm going to actually use simplified tax to illustrate um, all of the policy functions because it's quite a straightforward um, policy and so it's easy and straightforward to understand. So it contains, as I said, the function elige for eligibility um, like all eligibility functions do. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it contains the function eligibility because um, that's what we're talking about and it has two parameters eligcond as it has to as the eligibility function and tax unit. OK, let me give you an example of eligibility. I'm going to um, scrap that. OK, let me give you an example of the function elige. This is the eligibility condition. And I'm going to use the eligibility condition for simplified tax, not actually as it appears in the model, but to give you an illustration of how the um, function uh, works. So, first of all, we can see from the screenshot that the function elige just appears like that. And then there are two parameters in elige. Remember, I said always there's an elige underscore cond function and always there's a tax unit um, function. And there they are, both there within um, the elige function. And here are the switches. The policy itself has to be on and 
the LH function has to be turned on. These are those green ons. And then the eligibility condition is really quite straightforward here. It's if basically the income list for simplified tax, that's if the um, uh, taxable, simplified taxable income is less than or equal to 2.5 million metacals a year, then you're eligible for simplified tax. And that eligibility then sets a, a system variable which doesn't appear as one if that uh, income list for simplified tax is less than 2.5 million, if it's uh, less than or equal, I should say, to 2.5 million. If it's greater than 2.5 million, it will set that system variable to zero. Okay. I can also give you another example by one of the eligibility conditions in um, direct um, social support program. Here it is, and this is the eligibility of child-headed households. It's one of the um, eligibility conditions that's possible in direct SSP. And here we have the function elig as before. We have this time actually four parameters in total. The eligible condition, um, something called the level, which I mentioned to you before, which is a, you could think of as a footnote, um, the output variable, and the tax unit. Now, and the switches that I mentioned. Um, just looking at that, the eligible condition is is head of tax unit because we're trying to see whether it's a child headed household and that has to be at the level of the household because we're trying to identify who's the head of that household. So that's what that um, uh, level um, second parameter is about. So is head of tax unit hash one means go to the level one and that's at household level and their date, um, date of birth, uh, sorry, their age has to be greater than 11 and less than 18. Okay, and the output variable, which will be one if that's true, is is named I underscore child underscore headed, and the tax unit is individual because you're testing the individual, but you're trying to test whether he or she is head of tax unit. So at the level for the is head of tax unit has to be at the household. I hope that's clear. Okay. Now I want to go to function Arathop. Now function Arathop is a simple calculator. It must contain the parameter formula and the compulsory parameter tax unit. And a formula is just what it says. It can include variables, income lists, numeric amounts, queries and, and footnotes. The main operators are um, smooth brackets, plus, minus, multiply or divide. Queries automatically calculate particular conditions, e.g. number of children in household, or carry out tests, e.g. whether or not the person is married. We saw a query in the um, function elage um, in terms of um, is head of tax unit but there are these other queries that could come within the calculator uh, function of Arathop. Footnotes are used for example for applying upper and lower limits to a function or variable or specifying a level and uh, we've, I've already illustrated the uh, footnote is um, specifying a level when we looked at the level household in the elage uh, function that we have just gone through. So let's look at the Arathop function. And I'm sticking with this example of simplified tax, as I say, not as it's implemented actually in the policy, but to give you um, a sense of how it works. Remember, with simplified tax, We've already looked at the function um, elage, and the eligibility was that their uh, turnover uh, income 
uh, was less than equal, less than or equal to 2.5 million um, metacals a year. And then the arithop, which follows it, um, similarly has um, parameters and a simple algebraic formula um, in the formula compulsory parameter. So for the simple formula is that you take the turnover, the eligible turnover, and multiply it by 0 0.03. That's because simplified tax is at 3%. And then you that generates the output variable TTN underscore S. So we have an elege followed by an arithop, and that's a very typical way of calculating a social benefit. So often do you get the, the, an eligibility test followed by an arithmetical operation. And here's what it would look like if you um, implemented simplified tax with those two functions, putting the two functions out. So what we've got here is the edge function, which we discussed earlier. That is the turnover um, for simplified taxes less than or equal to 2.5 million per annum. And then the arithop, which we've just gone through, um, that you take that turnover and multiply it by 0.03, and that generates the output variable TTN underscore S. Okay, and that's a perfectly respectable and good way of implementing um, a simplified tax. Nothing wrong with it. Um, however, we do have another function, and this is what we use within um, MOSMOD. That's the function BenCalc, because BenCalc combines the functionalities of Elige and Arithop. And it's particularly useful for benefits, social benefits, and it's often referred to as the benefit calculator, hence BenCalc. But in this case, uh, it's a tax we're simulating, and it's very good also for taxes, because it combines Elige and Arithop into one neat function. Um, and, and, and that's how we actually do implement um, a simplified tax in MOSMOD. So the eligibility conditions, comp underscore cond, and the formulae to calculate the value of the benefit assigned to eligible individuals or tax units is comp underscore per elige or comp underscore per tu, depending on the circumstances. The same rules for syntax apply as uh, for elige cond in elige and formula in arithop. So comp cond is equivalent to elige cond in elige and comp per elige or comp per tu is the uh, um, equivalent of formula in arithop. BenCal can have multiple conditions with different amounts being assigned to the different conditions. So it's possible, it's a very simple and straightforward bank out we use for simplified tax, but it is possible for it to be much more complex. Um, so the eligibility conditions and corresponding formulae are specified in separate parameters when you've got um, multiple uh, um, uh, 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 um, conditions. So here it is, as it actually appears in um, MOSMOD, um, the actual um, simplified tax, but look at other um, policy functions. So I'll shift to the model. Okay, now let's just look at that um, simplified tax. Just as I showed you before, contains the um, uh, um, eligibility condition, the comp cond, um, and is the turnover Remember, that's what the income list for simplified tax is, is the turnover um, less than or equal to 2.5 million. And if it is, then the uh, formula, comp per TU, is applied. That is, the income list for simplified tax, the turnover, is multiplied by 0.03, which is 3%. 
and the output variable TTN underscore S will contain the simulated uh, um, turnover tax. We also remember looked at um, the direct SSP before and that's quite a complicated um, uh, social benefit actually with lots of different eligibility conditions. I showed you the one um, the eligibility condition for child headed households so is the head of the household that's at the household level the hash one um, uh, is the person a, 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 a head of the household yes that's at household level and is the age greater than 11 and age less than 18 and if that's so then a 1 is placed in this variable i underscore child headed. If it's not the case, then a 0 will be put into that, and that condition will be not fulfilled. There are similar other eligibility conditions. Um, eligibility condition that looks at disability. There is a variable called DDI01 in the data set, um, which is... Um, a variable for um, a chronic and degenerative diseases and if that's set to one then the person has got uh, a, a chronic or degenerative disease and the um, eligibility is set to one in this temporary variable i underscore bedridden and that becomes one etc and there are a number of those um, eligibility conditions uh, as possible routes into getting direct SSP. And then there are calculation uh, uh, um, uh, um, functions like Arithop. This is a, a function where we uh, calculate the household income using the income list um, DSA, which is the income list of the relevant income uh, required um, to uh, calculate household income. And the output variable is YMN01 underscore S. That's simply a variable into which that income list is, is, is placed. And the second of these arithops divides that total household income um, by the number of persons in the household, N purse in unit, and uh, puts out an output variable of the per capita income. And then there's an eligibility criterion that follows that, that looks at the per capita income. But I will go through this in much more detail when I actually talk through the model. Okay, well, I think you get the picture um, of how these policies are built up of functions and that the functions are built up of parameters. And that's really the basic way in which um, MOSMOD works. Let's go back now to the um, presentation and look at running the uh, 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 micro simulation model. Okay. So MOSMOD output is based on two inputs household micro data and the rules on how to calculate taxes and benefits stored in the content file. Using these two information sources, the model calculates all taxes and benefits that have been implemented. Calculations are carried out for each individual and household in the data set, and the result is written into an output file. This output file is at the individual level unless specified otherwise. And how do we run um, MOSMOD? Well, we actually uh, click, first of all, um, on that button that says run, in fact, Euromod at the moment, but we're hoping to get that changed, but run MOSMOD in the top left-hand corner of the user interface. And that activates the run dialog. So once you press that, you then get this. Um, and this has a list of systems which are ready to run. So you select the system that you want. In fact, there's only one system in MOSMOD at the moment. That's MZ underscore 2015. 
okay you also pick the best data set there's only one data set in Mosmod at the moment so there's not a not a list to choose from um, and that um, window at the bottom of that dialog specifies the output uh, um, folder where you'll find the output um, and that is specified actually at the very beginning when you set up um, Mosmod and it's usually in the folder output and then finally once the required selections have been made you click on the run button to start the simulation process and then you get another dialogue this is the one in the top left here um, where it shows you what particular configuration of systems and data um, you've specified and as I said there's only one data and one system so that's clear there um, tells you the status of the run um, uh, in the first um, dialogue it's still running but in the second we've uh, uh, it, it's finished um, and then if you look at the second of those dialogues once it has finished it tells you um, the time it's taken and that will depend entirely on the speed of the computer and the size of the data set and the complexity of the policies. There is a, a possibility that it might get an error log, but in this case there aren't, aren't any errors. But if the run is finished and there is an error log, it will simply contain warnings. But if there are fatal errors, the run will be aborted. So instead of finished in the status box, uh, it will say aborted. OK, when MozMod's finished its calculations, the output is stored as one or more text files at the storage place defined in the field output path, um, which is usually set when you launch the model. The main text file is called, for example, mz underscore 2015 underscore std, and that's defined in the output um, definitional policy, which we mentioned in an earlier session, that I can show you in a minute. And that file contains variables defined in that policy. Um, you can quickly look at it. Here it is, output. And you can see it actually outputs almost all variables um, because we can output groups of variables that begin with particular letters, like, for example, the demographics, D, and then the asterisk means all variables that begin with D. And there's the actual file specified in the first parameter of this particular um, function. Output files can be viewed in a text editor program or imported into any statistical analysis package, for example, Stata for more detailed analysis. The model also produces a header file relating to the output file and error logs relating to the output file are also stored as text files should you be unlucky enough to generate errors. OK, um, the activity associated with this particular set of uh, um, slides um, is actually exploring the policies uh, together. There will be a further video uh, in this series where we do explore all these policies, in particular looking in detail at these functions, Elige, Arithop, BenCalc, and then run the model to examine the output. Um, but however, I'll leave it there, thank you.